is Dr. Dennis Nicotone. Welcome to another edition of The Chiropractic Approach To. Today we want to talk about the chiropractic approach to digestive problems. Now, you know, a lot of people have digestive problems. In fact, it's the number five thing that most of our patients complain of. And what happens is, you know, a lot of people can have a lot of food intolerances. Uh, uh, they can have problems with uh, candida. Uh, which is after taking long-term antibiotics, hormones, different things like that, the type of toxicities we have in our everyday world, they can deplete the bacteria in their colon, so we would give them something like Biodophilus or Acidophilus lactobacillus, a probiotic to take every day. And if you're over 40, you should be taking that every day anyway. And we like the powder one, and you can take like a half a teaspoon at least once a day. So nutritionally, there's some things you can do. You want to watch out for some of your food combining. Like don't combine a lot of proteins with sugars because that can give you a lot of upset and gas and things like that. There are actually actual tests that we could do uh, that would help people identify specific in food intolerances because a lot of times people are uh, eating clean, uh, clean foods, good foods, uh, but they're still, uh, there could be pesticides, herbicides, different things on them, and they could still be sensitive to something like broccoli, which caused them to get gassy and bloaty all the way down here. Uh, a key in sign that you have problems with digestive problems, obviously, is that you could have digestive upset, you could have acid, you could have acid reflex, food, feeling like food sticks in the chest, doesn't go down all the way. You can get bloating immediately after you know you eat, or it can actually happen within 24 hours of eating if you have a food intolerance. Now, this affects your system. It affects your nervous system. As, chiropr as chiropractors, what we do is we look for nerve interference. And if you have a chemical toxicity, it, the nervous system goes crazy, it gets stressed, and all of a sudden it fires incorrectly, slides bones out of place, you can have spasms in the colon, you can have all sorts of things as a result of those types of activities that cause stress to your nervous system. So what we do is we make adjustments to relax the nervous system, get everything back on, on keel centered. Remember, your immune system is controlled by your nervous system. So when people are having trouble with eating and their colon, their immune system immediately is going down as well. So those are some important tips nutritionally that you can do. Another thing to watch out for is basic intolerances that um, have been uh, identified to cause a lot of problems, like, like gluten problems, uh, things like wheat. Uh, things like that that can cause, you know, uh, wheat, rye, uh, things like uh, heavy sugars. You can have chocolates. I mean, there could be corn. Corn's another big one that causes a lot of food intolerances. Um, uh, uh, soy is another one. We see people react to things like uh, uh, toxicity, uh, food substitutes, uh, dyes, preservatives, things like that. Um, uh, things like NutraSweet or... Uh, uh, different excitotoxins like MSG. So these are all types of things that can cause a problem. Dairy products are another big one, okay? And uh, eggs are not considered dairy. We're talking about more like milk and cheese. So those are things that, again, you'd have to avoid to watch out because those are common ones that can cause triggering to those an activity an interference and, and a, a stress to your nervous system. Remember, is your nervous system is the thing that processes stress, whether it's chemical, physical, or mental. So what I want to do here is I want to go through some of the adjustments that are extremely effective for helping patients with uh, these uh, digestive upsets. Now, you will have to identify by certain tests, like we have blood tests in my clinic, um, Nikito Chiropractic Wellness Center, you can go to our website, nikitowellness.com, and actually uh, we have a blood test that screens, you know, hundreds of food sensitivities as well as toxicities and different things like that, okay? Um, so basically, you could come in and we can do those types of things, but uh, we also have to, again, then identify the areas of the uh, the posture, the nervous system that's been overstimulated because when it overstimulates to the gut, you will have complete reactivity. Every time you step out of line, you'll get reactivity, bloating, things like that. So let me show you. We've got Luke over here who uh, we're going to be working with and we're going to, I'm just going to use his body basically to show you some of the things that we check for uh, when we're looking for any problems with the digestive tract. Now, in the nervous system, this area up here uh, uh, called the brainstem. It's the skull, the first bone in the neck, the second, and third surrounding area called the brainstem. Uh, up in the brainstem, there's area, there's nerves called parasympathetic nerves. Now, these are nerves that go all the way down to the colon. We have found if patients, for instance, have forward head posture, okay, they're going to compress now the skull on the brainstem area 
which is going to cause pressure and interference to those nerves that affect the gut. In fact, we've been able to help patients with ulcerative colitis, with Crohn's disease, with spastic colitis by just adjusting this area here and working on some of the areas that I'm going to show you, okay? So it's very important that your chiropractor checks you for forward head posture and then gets this forward head posture corrected and you need to see an x-ray and get the measurement of how much forward head posture there is, not just go to a chiropractor that's just adjusting you and popping your joints around. You have to do this in a very structured way. And chiropractors, if you're watching this, we have courses on this, so you can contact uh, me and we can go and I, I can share with you, we've got uh, DVDs and different things that we teach these type of techniques to for these types of corrections, okay? So we can show you how to adjust all these different organs and things I'm gonna kinda show you today. So basically you wanna make sure that the forward head is out, that these areas up here are free of any nerve interference, okay? Then what we do is we check an areas around the colon. Now there's typically four points. Now um, down in here on the right lower side of the uh, intestine is an area called the ileocecal valve. On the opposite side on the lower end is called the, the Houston valves, okay? And over here on these upper quadrants is just the right and left upper quadrant where the, where the colon takes a 90 degree turn, okay? There's what's called the splenic flexure and the transverse flexure. Now basically what happens is the colon is turning at a 90 degree angle at those spots. Now, when a patient eats something, oftentimes you'll feel like you're like, gosh, my, you know, I feel like I got a gas bulb or I'm bloated here, I got a pressure here. All of a sudden you just get bloated and you feel like you're blowing up like a balloon, like they, they could tie up a string to your foot and put you in the Macy's Parade. Okay, so basically what you want, we want to do is we want to identify those and then if these, if this keeps happening, these little valves or these, these smooth muscles will start to spasm on a regular basis. So you just walk through a food island and you'll get, you'll get this going into spasm. So what we do is we'll actually take and we'll check these to see if we need to move them uh, either uh, to relax these or uh, we call them open or close, say on the ileocecal valve. A lot of times we use a muscle test where we hold the muscle, we'll hold it tight, and then we'll push. If the muscle triggers weak, it indicates that the, the, uh, the valve may be open. If it triggers weak here, it may be closed. So most of the time, what we need to do on these is we need to... Um, close up these valves or calm down the spasm. So we'll come off of the ASIS doctors or uh, off the hip. We'll, we'll go real deep and then we'll push upward towards the opposite shoulder. So we go deep like this. We'll pull up towards the opposite shoulder and we'll hold for about, you know, uh, between 10 and 30 seconds. Now doctors, you'll be able to actually feel that muscle spasm uh, immediately disappear. We'll come up to this side and we'll actually go down and then we'll, we'll go towards the hip. So I'm actually pushing in this direction this way. And we'll do that. We'll do the same thing over here. Okay, and then sometimes we'll go in the middle of the two and pull them here. But these valves have to be adjusted. If these valves are adjusted, like down here, I'll push and I'll pull up towards this opposite shoulder. Okay, now, uh, if you're a patient and you have this constant bloating, you could try some of these things, but you really should go to a chiropractor uh, who does this type of work, okay, uh, who works on the digestive areas, not just gives you a bunch of natural pills or different diets, but we have to actually adjust these. In addition to adjusting these valves, we will adjust the lumbar vertebrae and the sacrum because the sacrum could shift one way or the other, which can cause effects with diarrhea and constipation, alternating constipation and diarrhea. Another real important thing is patients rub on the outside of your leg here. Now you'll find the outside of the leg in what's called applied kinesiology relates to the colon. So if you, you'll find a spot here that's all of a sudden really tender, rub that spot out. When you rub that spot out, all of a sudden that little spasm in that area of the colon will disappear. It's like a reflex point, okay? Now, when the digestion gets really bad, like if a patient has colitis or irritable bowel or things like that, or if, or if this area where these valves are stuck uh, in a spasm for a long time, what you're doing is you're actually reflexing uh, toxicity back in the body. In other words, when your colon is actually moving, it's moving like if you were to take a sausage and you were to squeeze the contents of the sausage, that's what's happening in your colon. Well, if that colon gets stuck where it's too spastic or it gets stuck open, the contents that are supposed to be moving this direction stay there and that could cause problems with your, your body absorbing toxicity. When that happens, doctors, check the cranial area for a, a temporal bulge. Now, go on the chiropractic approach to series that says cranial adjusting. And when, this bone right here will get out of alignment. It's right here. Now, when these valves, or if you have a toxicity in your colon, you'll usually get a chemical reaction that causes this to get subluxated. And the patient, not only will have digestive upset, 
but you'll have headaches that will go here and here. That's usually due to a chemical reaction, okay? Now, enough said when, you, when we want you to flush with a lot of water, but we have to fix these valves and calm these muscles down so the colon is relaxed and it closes and opens properly and the motility of the colon can continue moving in, one, in the same direction. Now, if the valves stay chronic, what can happen is you could blow out an acupuncture circuit or what's called an acupuncture meridian, and in this case it would be the stomach meridian. We see this really, really commonly. Um, we see this blown out more than the large intestine meridian, but doctors, the, if you're, if patients, if you're tender right here, like if you look at where your sternum is, which is right here, and go down here, okay, about a half a finger's worth, you'll feel a point. If that's tender, that's called an alarm point in acupuncture. I'm a certified acupuncturist, and so basically we'll check this point. Now, we do a lot of pressure techniques um, rather than actual needle techniques, but right here, if that's tender, that's called a stomach meridian. What we'll do is actually check here to find out if this is open or closed by doing muscle testing. Now, if this is, if most of the time we see that uh, we have to actually uh, strengthen this meridian, not, not if it's open or closed, but if it needs to be uh, stimulated or inhibited or uh, uh, increased or decreased. If most of the time we see that the stomach meridian, if you have a chronic digestive problem, needs to be um, uh, increased, okay, so that way we get the energy flowing back properly to it. So what we'll do is we'll actually rub some points called horary points, horary points, and basically these are on a time cycle, and we have to rub these points on the, on the wrist up here and the ankle, okay, here at the same time and you do them both sides if the body needs it and then you, you'll rub another uh, set here that are just on the ankle uh, which are right here and right here where we'll rub them. Now be careful because that patient is going to come off the table. When those acupuncture circuits are out of balance they are extremely extremely tender on those points that we're rubbing. However patients listen to this. We have helped so many people with digestive problems by closing and uh, working on their colon, closing the valves, um, you know, relaxing the spasms in here, uh, then the diet you change will hold. Everything will start to work better and it'll stay, and it'll stay in position versus it happening all the time. Uh, we remove the intolerances, but when we fix this acupuncture meridian, we fix these points, within five minutes a patient could be buckled over in excruciating pain, feeling like, like they go to the e, have to go to the ER and uh, they've come into our clinic and within five minutes after we do this, the, it's completely gone. My own wife, Sandy, what happened was she was on drugs before I married her. She was on drugs for stomach problems that was so severe that every time she ate, her, she would have to take Lamoto, which is a drug to calm down and relax her intestinal tract. Once I did this correction, she's never had a problem since. So it's absolutely amazing. Now, if you do eat something sensitive, these circuits could start to blow again. You can have quite a bit of problem uh, uh, going with, on with those. So this acupuncture circuit, these uh, working on the colon points are extremely helpful and then rubbing some of these areas in the legs uh, are other ones that, could, that uh, could give you quite a bit of relief. But what you want to do is make sure you're going to a chiropractor who knows how to adjust organs, who knows how to work with some of these meridians and acupuncture areas because those are uh, extremely effective. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what's called a hiatal hernia. Right in here is our diaphragm. It sits right in here, okay? A lot of times what happens is people feel like, feel like food sticks in their chest and it doesn't go down like they have to wash it down with fluid. Now, if it feels like food sticking in your chest and then you get bloating or heartburn right after you eat, it could mean that you have your stomach out of alignment. Now, a lot of times if, you're, if your head's forward and your shoulders have rounded and your posture's real poor, all that, what's happening is all the organs are crunching in here. As, as they crunch, the stomach starts to get pushed up into the diaphragm. And that's called a hiatal hernia. That can also cause spasms in the diaphragm where you have problems breathing, okay? And you can't take a deep breath. It feels like you can't get over the hill with your breath. You know, that one of those kind of things. So you're constantly struggling. You're going to the doctors, you're giving you pills, but basically we have to get this posture up and going like this to free these organs so it drops. And then what we do is we actually do an adjustment here that will pull the stomach down. Now, doctors, you can actually come in here underneath the rib and we can actually pull that stomach down because the stu there's a little ring inside the diaphragm here called the cardiac ring. The esophagus comes down, goes through the ring, and then it becomes a stomach. Well, if you've got this crunching thing or if you eat heavily and sit down or lay down, let's say you're eating tons of food. It's like at Thanksgiving. People get this a lot. They kind of almost regurgitate or reflux. Okay, we've heard of that. This is oftentimes helped by we fix these usually within just a few adjustments by pulling the stomach down. 
Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll actually push into this direction and make a thrust and thrust this down. Luke, why don't you stand up right here and face the camera. Stand right here. So what I'll actually do is with the patient, I'll come right here underneath the rib, okay? Now just let, let everything relax. I'm gonna kind of push upward and then I'm gonna scoop and I'm gonna pull down. So what, I want, what I'm doing is I'm getting underneath the rib cage, which is here, and I'm scooping up like this, okay? And I'm actually pushing down. So I'm dragging those tissues and I'm actually pulling them down and torsioning them. So I'm pulling them right out of this cardiac ring so that way it's free. And all of a sudden the patient can just feel that whole thing uh, move. So a very effective uh, uh, adjustment for that, for that stomach organ. Now another thing that we'll do is we'll actually do what's called an anterior adjustment. Have a seat on the table. When they have a, if you have digestive problems or a hiatal hernia, sit facing this way, cross your arms in the front. And what we'll do is we'll have them cross because the center portion of the back is usually a big problem and it's usually too far forward. So I'll come down low and I'll actually do a thrust like that. And that'll open up this area to free up the nerves that are actually affecting in the area of the gut, as well as going to the lower part of the back and up into the neck area. So I hope this gives you some insight on some of the digestive problems uh, common things that we see that are so easy to fix by chiropractors. We see patients that are constantly going to doctors, gastroenterologists, and we have studies that talk, like there's uh, studies from Scandinavia that talk about gastroenterologists uh, found that 72% of patients with gastritis, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, and heartburn uh, had subluxations of the spine in those areas that supplied the nerves to the abdomen. So. Uh, you know, these studies, these medical studies over and over again prove chiropractic. And when you're talking about patients that have irritable bowel, it's usually these valves and these intestinal things that I've shown you uh, how we fix to calm that down. You know, a common, you know, uh, diagnosis, and it's, it's almost like, you know, saying you got stress is irritable bowel. So when we go to fix irritable bowel, these are some of the things that we work with, okay, to help that and calm those areas down. So colitis, ulcerative colitis, spastic colitis, mucus colitis, irritable bowel. When your body's not functioning properly, you gotta get it back the way God made it, and that's how this uh, process works, and this is, these are some of the adjustments that uh, we can do. So I hope this helped you, uh, and uh, be sure to take a look at some of the other uh, segments that we go over if you want to find out more about the chiropractic approach to different types of things that we work with and how to do some of these techniques so we can maybe help you out with some of those things. Thanks for joining us.